Hi, I'm Erica Schultz, and you're listening to Into the Night, the Moon Knight podcast. Yes, welcome back, Looney listeners. You are listening to Into the Night, the Moon Knight podcast. This is episode 313, and it is the final episode for 2022. Um, thank you for joining us. You are with, of course, uh, one of the high priests this time, uh, just myself, but joining me is a valued Petruni, a valued member of our ITK community, uh, and massive Moon Knight fan, Mario Digicom. Mario, welcome. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, great. It's, thank you so much for making time. Um, yeah, we, we spoke, you know, online about uh, jumping on, coming on the show. Um, you know, wanted definitely wanted to have you on the show before the year was out. Um, just as things were kind of slowing down towards the end of the year, and you know, it, it is a bit of a sticky point um, with Christmas and the holidays coming up. Uh, we're a bit a bit more informal, uh, a bit more loose, but wanted wanted to to have you on to just chat about Moon Knight. So, uh, so thank you very much. Of course, My pleasure. Yeah. Uh, as always, I want to thank the likes of yourself, Mario, uh, and all the Patronis uh, as well for all your uh, contributions and help out with ITK uh, over the year and over the years. Um, so very much appreciate that. As well as our top tier Patronis, uh, Daniel Doing, Frank the Think Tank, Odin Odin Sword, and um, oh, I'm blanking. <laughs> and uh, and of course. Drew Tombs, yes. Um, yes, as well as uh, big thanks to CLZ Comics for supporting us this year, and of course, Dreamland Comics from uh, Illinois, Schoenberg, Illinois. So Mario, yes. we're here today, and um, Rebecca and I, in our previous episode, we spoke of just an, an overview of like, you know, what a, what a year it's been for Moon Knight, you know, what a great time it is to be a Moon Knight fan. Just before we get into, I wanted to talk predictions with you. Uh, what was your what was your sense of 2022 and, and being a Moon Knight fan? Well, I'm kind of a Johnny come lately as far as Moon Knight fans go. I didn't read the original run back when um, they first started the book. I didn't have access to a comic shop. I didn't really mm -hmm. start reading comics heavily until late 80s. So by then we're talking Mark Spector, Moon Knight, and... Mm -hmm. I'm sure. So I didn't really get into it back then. Um, I didn't really start picking up on the character until 2014 with the Warren Ellis run. So a lot of my impressions of the character come from those runs, not so much the earlier stuff. Mm -hmm. That being said, um, this current run is insanely good. <laughs> Uh, it's and thank you for all your feedback, by the way. Top uh, three run already, possibly even uh, top run. Wow. And, of course, having the TV show, which is a parallel but equally entertaining version of Moon Knight, just added you know, more to the appreciation. Mm. How, how are you with um with all, I mean, because with it and with the exposure of Moon Knight 2, a greater portion of uh, pop culture. H how are you with uh, with merchandise? Are you like a t-shirt buyer, action figure buyer, statue collector? No, I'm just a reader. Just a I reader, have, okay. Yeah, for sure. I have my trades over there. A big mm -hmm. stack of, yeah. of uh, trades and books. Um, I've never been much for merch in general. I mean, I, I was a reader first and foremost. Okay. And are you a do? You, so I'm getting the sense. Do you get the collected versions? Do you, do you don't get the floppies, or do you do get the floppies? Yes, I okay. get. Them. Yeah, I get. Oh, them. yeah, digitally, and then I yep. get hard copies of the trades. Yeah, nice, nice. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, I mean, as we mentioned as well with Rebecca, I mean, as you said, the TV show was great. Jen McKay, fantastic. What over the last 
you know, a year and a half has been so good. I mean, we're up to issue issue coming 18, yes. which incidentally will be dropped late December. I think I mentioned last episode, Looney. So uh, unfortunately, we won't be able to get to review that before the year end because we are having a little bit of a break um, after this final episode. But we'll be back in force again. Hopefully, Mario will have you back as well to um, to talk. Um, well, I'm actually on vacation that week, so I'm... Uh, I am, oh. Uh, going, oh, no. But I don't know when I'll be able to talk about it. Oh, it will be in the new year, like, you know, sometime. So we, we, I'm sure we can work something out okay. as well. Um, yeah, we, we won't. Yeah, I mean, we won't review it. Um, so I mean, you, Rebecca and I did talk about sneakily getting a copy, um, but I don't, I can't see myself recording um, around Christmas. So, um, but anyway, that, that'll be cool. There's also, um, you know, the likes of all the other books as well, Murray. We, we were blessed with uh, Black, White and Blood, that sort of stuff. We've got the annual, um, as well as Moon Knight appearing in numerous comics to kind of cash in, right, for, oh, yes. <laughs> for his popularity. Um, how have you found those? Like, Well, I found uh, Black, White and Blood to be a real mixed bag. Mm -hmm. And in each episode, each issue, sorry, still thinking of the TV show. Yeah. <laughs> one great story. Yep. One sort of by the number story and one story that was almost incomprehensible. <laughs> but uh, it was certainly they were they were certainly all in interesting interpretations of the character, some of them mm. closer to, to the canonical version than others. Mm. I love the annual. I thought the annual was fantastic. Annual's fantastic, yeah. Jed as McKay well again. As yeah. The um Crypt of Shadows? Did you know the uh, tie in issue? A, a oh, Devil's Rain, yeah. I didn't think Dark Rain, but I knew that was wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. After a that, while, the events started to sound alike. <laughs> yeah, they they were very they were very strong, I must say. Um, and, and you know, more Mooney is better than than none whatsoever. So we certainly have been lucky uh, this year as well. Uh, overall, as you're saying, you separated uh, the the TV show iteration from the comic book version because they are very separate I mean, you um, have to uh, if you go hmm. into any adaptation expecting it to be identical to the comic or the book you're going to be disappointed hmm. um, yeah. even if it's a relatively faithful one there are certain changes that have to be made for the medium yeah, yeah. now in the case of the moon knight tv show they really went their own way. Yep. And while it's very different from the uh, comic, it's also equally interesting. I mean, I was um, a panelist on our view of the last two episodes, and there was mm -hmm. all sorts of stuff going on in there involving <laughs> theology and mm -hmm. psychology, and some parts I'm still not sure whether they were real or not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a, certainly a different case. I, I asked Rebecca this as well, and I'm just wondering, I don't know if you uh, know of any people as well that aren't necessarily comic book fans um, but have been drawn in by the TV show. Had, have you had any experience with people that you know um, being exposed to Moon Knight and, and that having a positive or, or negative um, you know, result for the character? Well, I... Do have uh, some friends who consume all MCU um, content, you know, with movies, TV shows, holiday mm -hmm. specials, and so forth. Um, I can't say any of them were particularly um, dragged into the character by the MCU. The, the one uh, person I know who did uh, enjoy the TV show was already getting the comics. So uh, okay, yeah, yeah, because I just I always just wonder whether you know, whether the TV show does help in that way. You know, it, do, it does act as a gateway for people to say, okay, I'll start like digging into Moon Knight, checking out the comics. But then it being so different, of course, what their views are then of the, of the comics, you know. I want to see more of this Moon Knight that, um, that, that has this self, um, you know, the symbiotic kind of costume. I want to, you know, I want to say that, which I won't get in the comic books. Uh, it's just an interesting, I guess, conundrum um, by having them so different. Um, I, I'm um, of the, of the, I guess, the, the camp that 
yeah, I, I totally understand why it can be different um, and I've got no problems with that. But, you know, having again scoured this year online, Mario, uh, you know, there, there have been a, a varying degree of, of fan reactions to the Moon Knight TV show and uh, it, just, it just makes for interesting, I guess, discussion. Well, it's been my impression over the years and, you know, the MCU has been around for over a decade now that while... Sometimes the comics try to ape the MCU or at least, you know, go for some synergy. It never seems to actually translate to more readers. Mm. I mean, probably the canonical example of it is um, Black Panther. Mm -hmm. One of the, if not the most successful solo superhero movies on the planet and the book dropped out of the top uh, of the top mm. one by the end there's a new a group out now not reading it mm -hmm. but it's almost like either people can't find the comics because of the way comics are sold nowadays mm -hmm. or they're simply not interested in the medium yeah it is it is um I won't say worrying, but it, it is kind of like I mean, that is a great example. You know, it doesn't it doesn't translate the success of the film necessarily, or or dare I say, in general, um, into the comics. It seems that comics they might be carrying that baggage as well of just the uh, impression that one gets. You know, of of reading comic books, whether it's a kids thing, you know, um, or whether it's uh, a really dull down version of literature. Um, it, it's its own artistic medium. Um, I, I think it should be given its own merits. Um, but yeah, I find that, yeah, I mean, because the comic industry is constantly, you see it, like, well, you read about it, constantly struggling, like, with units and sales. And I don't know, I mean, there have been talks of, uh, with movies to expose it a bit more and, and, like, you know, give people a comic or something when they buy a movie ticket or something. I, I don't know what the answer is, but... Um, I feel that there's so much more potential that could be made by having, like, um, movies made or TV shows made alongside comics. Uh, as as a comic book fan, we're we're loving it. You know, we're we're rolling around in it. But we, need, I guess, they need more people, new people. Well, there are like three main problems with the comic book industry, and this is endemic to the mm -hmm. um, industry as a whole. It's not just Marvel. Affordability. Oh yes. Of accessibility. Course. And marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, the, I don't. I think the average comic now costs like five, six dollars. Yep. Or twenty two pages. Yep. Uh, if you if you're going after your young reader, and if you want a new audience, you have to go after a young reader. Mm -hmm. Then you want to deliver a product that's cost effective. I mean, mm -hmm. why would they spend six, seven dollars for a comic they can read in five minutes when for less money in many cases they can get a, a manga collection that has like a hundred pages. Mm -hmm. So there's yeah. more bang for the buck. Plus there's video games. Yeah, movies, um, Blu-rays, DVDs, yeah, exactly. These Music. Other, um, mediums to consume. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, you have the problem of accessibility in the sense that, okay, you want to read Batman, and you happen to know that there's a local comic book store nearby, which isn't always true. You go and I say, I want to read Batman, just like I did in the, in the movie that I saw uh, this year yeah. with Twilight. And I said, well, we don't have that bad. <laughs> but we have this bad. We have to, in order to get that one, you have to buy this book, this book, and this book. Meanwhile, we have that bad is an alternate universe. And to buy that one, you need that book. Yeah. And we have that alternate universe. Bad. They just want to read the character they, uh, they saw in the movie. And they're not going to get it. Mm. Because unlike many other franchises like Star Wars and... Um, Doctor Who and most manga, actually, mm -hmm. the two continuities are kept separate. Mm. 
course, they're not usually doing live action. And, uh, like manga and anime, they're, uh, the live action movies are a different thing. But if you watch yeah. the anime and you read the manga, it's the same character and often the same stories. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, a, it's a good point with the accessibility as well. I, I would also say, though, that maybe things are not too accessible, maybe, maybe very accessible in the sense that with digital versions as well, um, that might hamper sales. Uh, not buying digital versions, I mean, Mario, which I'm sure you do, but uh, how shall we say, sailing the seven seas, <laughs> um, um, for which which makes it accessible to read. I mean, and that that actually it's it's a bit of um, give and take because with that ability, you are able to attain volumes or entire arcs, entire omnibuy versions of of issues that you never would get in in hard copy format because they're old, very old or you know or long out of print. Yeah. Um you're able to read those and you're able to um to nurture your fandom by reading that, but it it is not translating to a dollar for for the comic book industry. Um that that's kind of I think a bit of a a bit of a crux as well but having said that you do expose people to more but then again you have to be savvy and know where to look on the internet that sort of thing too so yeah that being said there are legal uh, comics out there that are available for free mm -hmm. uh webtoons is one of them the, 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 there are lots yep. of comics and again i hate to keep harping on manga but this us uh, comics, the guys who do Shonen Jump, every week uh, release a chapter of, of a Japanese manga, the same time as re it's released in Japan, except they release it in English, called mm -hmm. Simon Club, for free. Right. You read the last three chapters for free. Yeah. And that means that someone can follow the story every week for free and then buy the collected editions. And those collected mm. editions are selling very well, despite the fact. Wow. That the that the uh, chapters are available for free online. Yep. Because yep. people want to follow the content. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I take it you are a manga a manga fan. Uh, uh, I've been a fan of anime and manga since before I knew what it was. Nice. I go all the way back to the nineteen seventies, Star Blazers, Wow, Battle of cool. the Planets. So... Nice. <laughs> no, because you seem very, um, uh, very much on top of how it is, and I don't doubt you for a second. And and that's what I hear a lot about manga and anime: how they are leaps and bounds ahead of the comic book industry for, for those apparent reasons. How like sales and stuff. I mean, they 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 seem to be a whole lot more successful in that. And and you you've been um, highlighting exactly that that point as how they do that um yeah i mean it's without getting too far i mean this is an absolutely i love to chat about and we're, we're here you're on the couch you're on the mr knight couch i'm settling back here and we are just chilling and chewing the fat um but i mean i do want to kind of uh obviously get us back on course with moon knight related stuff um, okay. I, um but I intended ramble Oh, hey, you and me, you and me both would make a great rambling pair i think you know would um <laughs> anyway uh with Moon Knight, I guess, as, as we said, we, we've talked about the um, the video, uh, the the films, and and the comics that's that's come out now. I wanted to get your predictions, um, as far fetched as they may be, or as considered as they may be, for next year. What we can expect, what we can, as Moon Knight fans, look forward to next year, based on what you've read this year. I'm talking like articles and speculation about the TV show, Moon Knight appearances, um, about how you think the Jed McKay run is going, all that sort of stuff. What, I guess I'll open up with, um, how do you think, well, let's start with the comics because they're, they're by far the superior. <laughs> how, how do you view um, the health of Moon Knight in comics uh, in, in the next coming year? Do you see a long run by Jed McKay or do you see otherwise? Well, it's still a top 25 book, which I think it's even, maybe even That's awesome. it's in the, the latest sales figures. So it's definitely not in any danger. Uh, I suspect oh. that um, as long as it's doing as well, Marvel will be more than happy to keep publishing it. Yeah. Um, as to where it's going, um, the advanced solicits don't really tell you much other than he's uh, just apparently going back to the Mark Spector Moon Knight uh, era and referencing the Shadow Cabinet, which is interesting. Mm, 
Yeah. Um, and also Commodore Planet. Ooh. Commodore Planet, yes. Oh, <laughs> I have no idea why he dug him up, but I never do with Jed. He's very good at the deep cut. Sometimes he's yeah. even surprised me. Yeah. yeah. Um, I do have a couple of wild suppositions. Please, please. Um, the first one is that in an earlier issue, Tigra was reading the newspaper, the Daily Bugle, and mm-hmm. mentioned that Midnight Man had been seen again. Oh, you're right. Yeah. So I'm, I'm fairly positive that one Midnight Man or another is going to show up in the book eventually. Because Jed doesn't do, doesn't throw away lines like that without. Uh, yeah. Is- there were a couple of drops of that, weren't there? Like there were a couple of shots of newspapers or something. I remember um, with well, we something about Rutherford Winner back in the day. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, okay. I'm fairly certain there will be a Midnight Man appearance at some point. Mm-hmm, Whether mm-hmm. it's going to be Jeff or someone else, mm-hmm. absolutely no clue. Who who would you like to see? Would you like to see Anton back? Or would you like to see Jeff? I think Jeff would put Mark to the ringer more. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, but I think yeah. it will also be hard to justify. Yeah. Um, I suspect, well, this is a bit more out of the uh, usual path. I suspect there might be a Night Raven appearance at some point. Oh, uh, because, okay. Um, Jed named drop Yi Yang, who is the villain of the Night Raven oh. in the Marvel UK era. Mm-hmm. And there was absolutely no reason to include that character unless he plans on doing something with the character. Yep. And even Yi Yang, Night Raven is almost certain to show up at some point. Yep, yep. Cool. Uh, I also think that there's probably going to be a major Khonshu story at some point because not only do, does Mark apparently have to pay a price for Khonshu's help uh, back in... Was, Issue eleven, mm-hmm. where he needed Conchu's help to get to the minute. That's right. That's right. But also the fact that Conchu is still, you know, chilling in a cell in Asgard, and I'm <laughs> sure he has to get out at some point. That's going to be resolved. It might not be, but I'm fairly certain that somewhere along the way, that's going to be con- going to have to be confronted because yep. Conchu wants out. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. At, at all points, I mean, these are, I'm going to try and list these, loony listeners, because um, we are doing predictions. My my intent, Mario, is then at the end of next year to pull out this like a time capsule and say, okay, this is what our predictions were for 2023, and uh, and this is you know this is was correct, this wasn't whatever. So th- this is going to be a bit of fun. I'm hoping we can uh, continue this down the years uh, as well. So I'll be listing all of that out. Uh, uh, was it? Did you say so? Kill Raven, Night, Night Raven. Raven. Not Kill sorry. Raven is someone else. Oh yeah, sorry. Night Raven. Also, yeah, yeah. Also Marvel UK. Now that I think about it, I guess they just like the Ravens. They love the Ravens. There was that. Um, you're talking about a, con- a big conscious story um, and Midnight Man, which are, are great predictions. I guess having said that as well, Mario, you're assuming um, the prediction would be that Jed will continue the run next year. I mean, because you can predict or you can you can speculate that, okay, uh, it's in the top 25, so we will get Moon Knight still. Um there might be a door open there for potentially another creative team. I'm only saying that not because I don't, I love Jed's run, but he is getting a bit busy now. Like with he's in demand at Marvel. I'm just worried about his workload. That's all. Well, he seems to enjoy uh, continuing a character. I mean, mm-hmm. he's gone from death of Dr. Strange to strange. Now the new Dr. Strange book mm-hmm. he's done. He did black cat and then he did, like four or five, I lost count of how many black cat minis. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So at this point, I don't think it's a question of him, okay. you know, bogging down workload as how many stories do you want to tell with the characters? I yeah, mean, he yeah. could easily just, you know, told the story of Dr. Strange dying and coming back to life and moved on. Mm-hmm. He wants to keep writing Dr. Strange and Clea. Yep. So... I, I, I think that as long as he has stories to tell mm-hmm. and the sales uh, keep Marvel happy, he's going to keep writing that book. 
Okay, so that's another prediction that um, I, I will put down. Uh, and I'm, I'm just going to collectively put our predictions down, Mario. They're not going to be yours or mine. Um, I'll just put them down as end of year ITK. Another prediction then I'll log in is that we will get the full complement. Well, we'll, you, you happy with that, Mario? The, the whole year next year? So Jed will still be riding Moon Knight by December 2023? I think chances are good, yeah. That's, that's another 12 issues. I mean, that's not that many more, right? You know, so we'd I mean, be, he's be getting to 30. Third arc now. So we're talking yep. essentially two more arcs. Yep. One of which is starting. We are, you know, starting. So, yeah, I yeah. think. So issue. Okay, okay. So log that one down. In, so uh, we'll get at least up to issue 30, right? And so 30 or 31, um, if you do the maths. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, by the end of next year, which I'm, I'm very excited about. Okay, I'm happy and with that. Just offbeat. It wouldn't shock me if Morpheus shows up at some point because he's used everybody else. Who was that, sorry? Morpheus. More? Oh, please do. Please yeah. do. Yes. The only character I can't see him using is Bushman because he'd be simply outclassed at this point. Mm hmm. Yeah, unless something happens to Bushman, unless he gets True. genetically or whatever enhanced. I mean, because he's really on the cusp there, isn't he, as well? Uh, you, you could just tell. Um, who was it? Um, oh, I can't remember the name. One of these mad scientists will we'll tr probably try and get him. The guy that did the. Um, uh, that, that gave US agent he, the power broker. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm you sure someone. Carl Malice or one of the others. Malice. Yeah, Malice is the one I was thinking of. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There, Mar Mike Sanders, you pretty much, you know, throw a rock and hit a mad scientist at Marvel. <laughs> exactly. That's one of them, sure. Yeah. Um, As for... Fitting into the book tonally. Um, mm. one thing yeah, I've noticed, fair um, And the annual helped me bring it into focus. Is that Jed isn't writing a superhero book. He's writing a horror book. Yeah. Yes. You know, we've had, we had zombies. We've had werewolves. We've werewolves. had vampires. We've had mummies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's 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 uh with the annual. I think we mentioned it. Um, he's really rounded that off because we've got the vampire contingent in um in the the main series. Uh, with the annual, he was able to kind of flesh that out and round it off with Jack Russell. It was interesting. Uh, what your I, I enjoyed seeing Jack Russell back, albeit in a very different role as King of the Wolves. That was very um, a nice take. Um, uh, you know, obviously he's getting his um, spotlight, his his time in the sun with the the ones the the holiday special uh, this yes. year on on Disney Plus. Um, but yes, how about? Mm, I mean, Marvel's always going to have an event, a crossover event. I'm assuming Moon Knight might feature in that. Um, any other? Would you would you see Moon Knight? Would we get a second title? Is that on the cards, prediction wise, or no? You think one title will be enough this year, the next year? I think we might get some tie-ins uh, yep. for one event or another. I don't know if there'll be. A, I don't know if Marvel does second volumes of the Black White and Blood mini. Oh uh, yeah, I, that's pretty. Yeah, that's a that's a. I think that would be low prob probability, but um, yeah, I, I would agree with you as well. Tie-ins. I think definitely whatever events will happen. In the next year, I'm sure Marvel will have twelve events. <laughs> you know, <laughs> next year. Um, I, I have to, I hate to be mercenary about this, but he doesn't have a movie or TV show coming out. And I've noticed that when char characters who have movies or TV shows coming out tend to get a lot of spin-offs. Mm -hmm. TV shows and movies are over. No more spin-offs. Mm. So, yeah, true, true. You mean spin-offs in comics, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, for example, uh, when Ms. Marvel uh, came out, there was all, there were there were some specials, and uh, Eternals suddenly had a new series, and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yep, I don't, I don't get me. Mean. night, all of a sudden he had he had an annual. Now I'm sure Jed planned it, but yep. still, he's been sitting in limbo how long? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so if he does a guest shot somewhere, there'll be times. Well, that that was my next. Um, I was going to point point the barrel towards that as well. Now, Mario, um, speaking of time on screen, now I know that it seems very um, unlikely as well. But there's always wiggle room for something. Do you do you see any chance of Moon Knight appearing or re 
maybe even just referenced in what we have coming up uh, in 2023. We know we know the roster for the films. I haven't got off the top of my head. We know what's coming out next year, uh, as well as TV shows as well. So I'm wondering, would Moon not be factored in any of those? He could. Uh, Blade would be an obvious choice. but of course, Yeah, but that's been pushed back, though, hasn't it? That's sort of in a weird limbo state right now. Mm, very disappointing, uh, that. I could see maybe Daredevil, maybe Echo, because um, those Ooh. are sort of street oriented. The problem is he's off in London. Yeah. And Daredevil, I assume, is going to be in New York. Echo could be practically anywhere. Yeah. Uh, on a more obscure uh, chance, maybe Thunderbolts, because that's yep. sort of a Black Ops type movie. Yep. Um, Anything is possible involving the Avengers movies, particularly with, with Kang, who does have a history with the character, although yeah. the recent one. Uh, but the, that's uh, that's beyond that's twenty twenty four, right? We're, we're, that's further down. Oh, right. Sorry, I yeah, yeah. I saw one big Mulan. Oh yeah, me, yeah, me too as well. I, I I don't know which is I can't remember what is on next year exactly, but yeah, I mean like Quantum Mania. I don't think we'll get anything. Um, Moon Knight related. I mean, look. Love and Thunder was perfect for us to see Konshu in it, you know? But we didn't see anything. Apparently they actually considered it, or at least having it referenced to the, the, inside the TV show. Mm. But then again, that was relatively comical. Yeah, I know. But at least to have and him there would have been cool. <laughs> for all of his arrogance, Konshu's played relatively seriously in yep. the TV show. Yep. Um, he's arrogant, yeah, but he's sarcastic, but he's not a, a figure of comedy. No. Uh, the other pantheons in Love and Thunder were treated as, well, not so much comical with the exception of Zeus himself, but oh, Zeus, oh, gosh, Zeus. certainly less numinous for uh, yes, no. lack of a better word. I mean, when you've got, possibly, she was never identified as such, Bast from the Black Panther chilling mm-hmm. at the party. Yep, yep, yep. All of a sudden, yeah. uh, the cosmic nature of the interaction becomes a lot less interesting. Mm-hmm. So I'm glad Country didn't show up, or even yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I mean, with no. um, with Quantum Mania, I, I guess because um, we saw in the TV show, Conchu, uh he can span across time. You know, he 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 brought back the the night sky from thousands of years ago. You got Kang with time as well. I mean, there there might be. I personally, I don't think we'll get anything at all um, from that movie, Moon Knight wise. Um, Secret Invasion, I think less so as well. Maybe like Secret Invasion, which is next year. You never know. That's that's meant to span globally, right? So theoretically, yes. But mm. well, I suppose you could uh, you might show up for a cameo or something. But like one scene, or at least worst case scenario for Moon Knight fans, you get someone mention him. Like, you yeah. know, that guy in the white cape over in London or whatever. What would be yeah. really fun is if a scroll tries to impersonate him when we get, like, Mr. Knight fighting Moon Knight. Oh, Mr. that would be, that that would be cool. A, that would be cool. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Um, it's impossible to say, really, because they could throw in any characters they wanted. Um, mm. Based solely on, you know, uh, how big, how good the contracts are. Because Oscar, I don't, I don't think he'd sign a contract to show up. Uh, in just a cameo, he'd probably want a relatively medium role. Yeah, but of course, yeah. put, him the, put someone else in the costume, then it doesn't become a problem. Yeah, exactly. That that's what just get him to do it. Yeah, yeah, true. I, f- unfortunately, I'm getting a sense more and more that, and this is just me purely speculating that that Oscar likes the idea that Moon Knight is just kind of like uh, self-contained little sandbox that he got to play with and he's happy to just let it go and um that was his contribution to marvel that's it that's a sense i'm getting i hope i hope i hope i'm totally wrong i hope he comes out um he arrives again in some films but yeah uh again i'm just thinking of that instagram video with muhammad Diab's daughter uh was that just purely fun on their behalf to just pretend that i don't, I don't know who knows sometimes they play games that might so be a really old lie. that might be a really old video that she released after the fact that the movie that the TV show came out that could have been a a video that would have been perfect to release on Instagram 
before the, the TV show was announced, you know? Like, or I, maybe I they were know. just discussing, you know, pre-production on season two and mm. it just isn't on the schedule yet. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think while I agree with you that Mark enjoyed the fact that he was, you know, doing his own thing and then wasn't beholden to the rest of the MCU, I'm also pretty sure he'd like to explore Jake more. Oh, actually, very true. That's what Rebecca did mention as well. There's plenty to explore there. So it's not like uh, he's milked all the f uh, all the entertainment value out of that character. He's got a lot mm -hmm. more to explore as an actor. Yeah. Because he's also, yeah, true. Uh, he was also busy recording uh, the Across the Spider-Verse. Across the Spider-Verse. He, he just hasn't had time to start filming yet. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's true. That's true. Um, I can't wait for that one as well. Um, got my... Uh, one of my faves there, Jessica Drew, of course. Uh, but yeah, it's also fun to hit, to see Oscar. Uh, <laughs> Rebecca made the comment that Miguel looks a little bit chunky. <laughs> in the, in the, uh, have you seen it? The preview. I have, although it's a very quick shot, and yeah, I think I don't know how chunky he looks. He definitely looks more like Oscar than the comic book version. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. The comic book version is a white guy with red hair. Oh yeah, I I can't. From my memory, I only recalled him in costume. I, I didn't. I can't remember. It, it flashed by. I haven't really watched it. I've only watched it once, really quickly. But w was he revealed? Was he? Um, yeah, just one quick shot. Um, okay. Wish hair. Okay. Oh, oh cool. Um, skin. Um, yeah, yeah. So, by way of predictions for for anything Moon Knight in in twenty twenty three, Maria, what what have we come up with? Um, a yes, maybe for no. Apply hazy ask again later. <laughs> there is so much going on and so many moving pieces mm. that whether Moon Knight fits in any of these projects was mm. impossible to say. Yeah, he could, he could theoretically fit, uh, fit in Quantum Mania. Um, mm. He could uh, theoretically fit in Secret Invasion. Well, what are the other fit in i don't know guardians of the galaxy so oh it's... that's coming out Guard year three it's guardians three um marvel occasionally surprises us yeah that's true um actually yeah I, i'm looking forward to guardians of the galaxy three um despite our coverage of the holiday, <laughs> holiday special um what what other what other films are we waiting for next year mario i'm just um so check it out. There's Quantum Mania. There's um, Guardians. There's got to be more, right? Am I missing something? Um, what is? Let me see. Let me let me just have a quick look. MCU movies 2024, 2023. Sorry, I'm getting way ahead of myself. Oh, the Marvels, of course. Oh yes. The Marvels. Well, that's that's it, I think. Yeah, uh, they, yeah. They seem to be focusing more on the streaming stuff. Although I did hear that, uh, read an article just today, actually, that, you know, Marvel's starting to think about, you know, refocusing on the, on the movies because they've been doing so much streaming. Oh, recently. okay. But that was just a rumor, so who knows? Okay, because, yeah, because Rebecca surprised me in our previous episode. She did mention that. It looks like they might be veering towards more of those specials, you know, because they're quite fun. You know, the, the Werewolf by Night and the Guardians Holiday Special. It, it does give you some flexibility, I guess, to tell some really kind of story, one-off stories, uh, like yeah. mini movies. I think they're good. Uh, oh, they're, they're great, and but it's important to remember, by the way, that these TV shows are often the equivalent of two or three movies in length. Yeah. In terms of sheer yeah. content, mm -hmm. there's a lot more screen time in, a, in in a streaming TV series than there is in a movie, unless it's like, you know. Infinity mm. War or Endgame, which is like four hours long. Yeah. Even then, some of them are pretty long. I mean, how many episodes was She-Hulk? So, six, was it? No, eight, nine. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't In know. any case, I think that was, uh, if you add all those together, I think you still got like three or four hours of content. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So... I, I, which do you prefer? I, I actually do love the streaming... I, I do like the TV shows because um, I don't know how easy it is for you to get to the cinemas, um, but for me, it, it's nice to have these, sh like, and for cinemas, you're, you're committing to, like, two, maybe two and a half hours. 
um, streaming services, oh, I like those little bite-sized chunks. Um, I like the shows. Oh, well, yeah. There's nothing wrong with a little done in one. Just think of it like a one-shot. You know, mm. you can have a miniseries. Mm-hmm. You can have a maxi series. You can have an ongoing. But sometimes all you need is a one-shot. Yep. And in a way, these are like Disney Plus one-shots. Um, yeah. Varying tones. The holiday special was not very similar to uh, the World no. War Nights. Uh, holiday special or special presentation, but they were uh, they were strong, self-contained stories. Just just out of interest, what did what did you make of both Werewolf by Night and the Holiday Special Guardians? Did you enjoy them both? Well, Werewolf by Night was not what I expected. Mm-hmm. Um, based on the trailer, I got I thought it was going to be more of a you know over the top grindhouse parody sort of thing. Mm, okay. But it was actually, you know, a really nice retro 1950s horror. Uh, yeah, I, lo- I liked it. Yeah. Program. Uh, I had thought that the choice of characters was interesting. I was not expecting me anything. <laughs> um, Elsa Bloodstone was perhaps not as entertaining as the comic book version, but was yeah. in character. The use of color was fantastic. Mm. And uh, it was an entertaining and very tightly told story yeah the holiday uh, the guardians of the galaxy a holiday special was ridiculous but it was meant to be ridiculous yeah the song which by the way i actually have on my phone, oh yeah with the so you need to hear it yeah is completely silly yeah it works and you know it ends on a heartwarming note rocket rocket finally gets his artificial arm <laughs> yeah. and, that caused uh, uh, that caused waves online. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. some people take things way too seriously. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you just have to, you know, sit back and enjoy it. Just for the sake of the story, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no, that yeah, that's interesting. Look, so um, it's hard to. Pre- I mean, it's hard to have like predictions like that because we know they've kind of mapped out next year. Like, so we can only really predict. You know, if there's any appearances, because I I would have loved to, like just said, oh yeah, I reckon if anything, Moon Knight's gonna have like a, a special, like a, a special next year. Just you know, it's not a, a series and it's not a movie. He'll have something a little bit in between, but we know that's not gonna happen. So, um, by way of uh, film wise, I guess we're saying maybe I'm gonna we're go- I'm gonna have to commit to something here, Mario. I'll, I'll say for us, speaking on behalf of both of us, um, that. Uh, I'm going to say that we'll we'll get some sort of reference. Why not in Quantum Mania? Why not? Because Kang all over the place. You know, multiverses, time. There's going to be something there. You might mention Kangshu. I don't. Yeah, think that's, what I, that's what. Right. Yeah, that's what I mean. We're not going to get an appearance of Moon Knight or anything like that. I, I reckon we'll just get a mention, and I reckon it will be more veered towards Kangshu as well. So that that's that's a prediction for this year, up for next year. A bit out there, but that's I can't say it's there. impossible. Yeah, exactly. I can't say it's impossible either, but knowing what we know, because they, they do announce everything, um, yeah, I can't see it anywhere else, really. I can't even see it in Secret Invasion. That's not going to not gonna be, um, yeah, a thing at all. Um, actually, hey, here's another one. One final thing, Mario, before we go. For all next right. year, then, will we get an announcement, then? For ne- a, a, an announcement of more news of Moon Knight <laughs> in TV or, or film? We can do that. Do you reckon there'll be some sort of announce a confirmation? I think that since uh, after being pitched to the Emmys as a limited series, it didn't, you know, grab any major awards. Mm-hmm. But it did do pretty well. Mm-hmm. I could see it. I could see Moon Knight season two being added to the schedule, whether it's Okay. This year, you know, next year or, or yep. farther down the road, I could see that as a possibility because I think that for the character, that's uh, perhaps the better medium mm-hmm. because movies don't often give you a opportunity for introspection. Sorry, um, opportunity for what? Sorry introspection introspection yeah yeah um yeah. you know they tend to be relatively fast paced you know any mm-hmm. 
uh, character beats are, are, are brief, and then it's on to the next set piece. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. first, you have to reserve the third act for a big CGI fight. <laughs> yes. TV show, you've got a couple of episodes where you can, you know, slow things down and take your time. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. Well, how about we throw that in then in the mix? So for, for the end of next year, we'll have there's going to be some sort of announcement, um, uh, you know, with progress at least. Yeah. Maybe uh, for not the, yeah. a, you know, this show is going to be on in 2024, but at least this show has been greenlit for a season two. Yes. 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 Okay. That, that seems very reasonable and still, you know, enough to be a, a speculation, a speculation. So, okay. So loony listeners there, it is, I'm going to try and list this in our show notes. These are the predictions for 2023. Um, Maria, I want to thank you so much for, for coming on. I know that we have uh, a little bit of limited time, both you and I. So yes. um, it's, it's unfortunate we, we have to cut this short, but um, it's been so cool to have you on. Uh, definitely want to have you on next year. Hopefully we can make those time zones align. Hopefully daylight saving doesn't make such a tricky business of it. We can we can organize something outside of that. Um, but sure thanks. We work. Sorry? I'm sure we can make it work. I'm sure we can make it work as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to discussing comics um, more, you know, even outside of that, uh, more maybe um, films and TV um, with, with D plus or MCU with you. Uh, there's plenty ahead, I think, for us Moon Knight fans. So uh, a huge thank you once again. My pleasure. No worries. Uh, Loonies, uh, this wraps up our year. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. I've, I love the thought of actually, yeah, having someone like uh, Samario, a, a Valley Petruni, in to, to round out this year just for a bit of a chat. Uh, thank you so much once again, everyone, for supporting uh, the Petrunis like Mario uh, and our principal sponsors, uh, our sponsors as well. Stay tuned. Next year we'll be back um, looking at uh, maybe mid-January. Mid um, onwards, uh, we'll be back. Uh, we'll line up a few things. Fingers crossed, I can get some time to write um, for our serial. Um, fingers crossed, we are due, Mario, a big 300 episode celebration. So I would love to have you back on there for that. We're, we're thinking, I'm thinking, we are thinking, <laughs> I'm thinking of a, a trivia, a game, a game night as well. Um, so I'd love to have you on board to, to get your mind thinking and uh, get your hand on the buzzer. Um, but uh, there's plenty in store. Looney listeners, uh, have a safe, safe and enjoyable holiday. Um, Mario, any any uh, plans in particular for the end of the year or just before we go? Catch up on my sleep. Oh, that that is the number one, I think, for a lot of people. Um, but, yes, that's, that's a good one to have. Um, yes. 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 Uh, so, Looney listeners, a big thank you once again, uh, and we'll see you on the other side of it. Hope you get read a lot of Moon Knight. Hope you get a lot of Moon Knight merch and omnibuses and trades and all that. And as always, may Conchie watch over the denizens of the night. Catch you later, gators. and affiliated characters, stories and events are properties of Marvel Characters Incorporated. Materials used and discussed within the podcast are intended for critique and review purposes only under the fair dealing concept of the current Copyright Act. The views, information or opinions expressed during the podcast are solely those of the individuals involved and do not necessarily represent those of the copyright owners. See this episode's show notes for our unique promo code to get up to two months of free podcasting service with Libsyn when you sign up for a new account. Get your show on Apple and Spotify. Get helpful stats and all the support you need to sound your very best. From the time of his hatching, he was different. 
a potentially brilliant scholar who dreaded the structured environment of school. He educated himself in the streets, taking whatever work was available, formulating his philosophy of self from what he had learned of the world about him. And then the cosmic axis shifted, and that world changed. Suddenly, he was stranded in a universe he could not fathom. Without warning, he became a strange fowl in an even stranger land. Welcome to the one, and for some reason only, podcast about Marvel Comics' greatest talking duck, Howard the Duck, trapped in a world he never made. Hosted by myself, Noel, who's loved Howard since he was a kid. And me, Russell, who's not new to comics, but is new to Howard. We go through a couple issues from Howard's Marvel comic book history with some creator backgrounds, storied histories, and the weird world of 1970s comic books to today's. Get ducked up in a world he never made. Trapped in a world, the Howard the Duck podcast. Wow! Proud members of the collective.